Hi there, it's uh, Richard Little and your land partner. Um, it's uh, video 35 out of 100 um, and we are in the midst of a series in relation to the full development appraisal, the FDA. Um, and today we are going to be talking about the legals and what in uh, what in respect of the legals we include in the FDA and the importance um, of, of of any legals um, in the in the process in the whole process. So, so legals um, weave in and out of the development process all the way through, from you know negotiating and securing at the front end to to exiting at the other end. Um, and it's 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 probably one of the areas where um, people probably take. In, in our view, uh, unnecessary risks. Um, there's a lot of stuff around in terms of contracts, agreements, and different things that, are, yeah, they're, they're largely cut and paste, or, or they're just probably not that good. Um, and so that the whole purpose of taking legal advice and getting legal input is is to a strengthen um, strengthen the project strengthen the, the potential project at this point um, and, and and you know so de-risk it really and 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 get rid of those liabilities so when you um, commission a a lawyer um, to create a document whether it's a you know a loan agreement or whether it's a exclusivity agreement or whether it's a contract you know what what you are in effect doing is passing on the liability of getting it wrong to the lawyer it's not as straightforward as that because there's lots of wriggle room etc but we're not here to talk about that today but what we're actually saying is there's so much legal stuff that people need in in a development project regardless of its size to be to be to be perfectly frank with you so it was already mentioned you know at the point of doing a, a full development appraisal we may have had a, an exclusive exclusivity agreement with a site owner with a landowner uh, in order to give us the time to go and complete this full development appraisal which can take you know a number of weeks i mean yes we could probably do them in a couple of weeks but generally we want to allow you know four to six weeks really um because there's a lot of third party input um so it could start off with those exclusivity agreements um but typically what we're seeing is the first from our own experiences the first um the the, the, the first time we actually talk to our lawyers is, is for a title review so if we're obviously looking at some land it could be under a number of titles it could be it could be freehold it could be leasehold there could be all, all sorts of leases underneath it um so this is at the point where you know we get input for, from our lawyers so we're, we're pretty adept at, at, at reading you know land reg title documents etc etc um and we're obviously looking for a lot of information we're generally looking for restrictions around the covenants and all this sort of stuff um um, and so, you know, but some are quite complex. There's quite a lot to it. Sometimes you have to get further information, request further information from land registry. If you've got an e-services account, for instance, um, and some of that stuff comes through. It's the sort of stuff that goes through in the conveyance, but it gives us, it forewarns us about some of some of the issues. Um, so even though we are quite adept and experienced at doing this, we will still get input um, from from our own lawyers. Um, as I say, it's you know two heads are better than one, uh, and you know that gives us a little bit more assurance that what we're doing is the right thing. So if there are restrictive covenants, for instance, what we're what we're looking for at the full development appraisal stage is, you know, can we actually take any indemnity policies on any of those restrictive covenants, particularly some of the older ones? You know, you'll see covenants on there that you know will won't permit certain uses and on that particular piece of land and that building. You know. Um, uh, and what we what we normally do is we'll take out an indemnity policy, but the lawyer is going to give you uh, the very best advice in terms of what you can indemnify uh, and what you can't, and also when you do it. So there's uh, there are issues where with indemnity or instances, sorry, with indemnity policies, you've got to take them out at the right time. So it's really really important at a fairly early stage just to get a little bit of input. So you know what we effectively call a title review. You know we're picking out any little bit any little points any sort of issues that we might have now some of those issues um give us um it, it gives us a negotiation point so if there are if there are problems uh we've got uh, two at the moment uh one where the 
Um, it was mishandled. Uh, we've got four four landowners, co-landowners, uh, all siblings, uh, and their father left them uh, collectively a few acres of land, but it was all split into, into separate bits. We're putting something together for the whole thing, and it's then discovered that the lawyers that are now trying to sort it out at the time, they didn't register one of the pieces of land, so it's actually in what would have been their stepmother's um, hands she's very very ill they're trying to get it sorted out with uh, i understand her daughter you know we can't do anything about that it's just a total mess um so actually all that does is puts that project on hold for us but but actually you know that and that was something that came up um through title um title review uh, and there were a number title a number of titles there so you know we invested a few hundred pounds um you know sort of looking at the stuff and and getting somebody to to give us some input and we've now not spent any more on that project we're heads of terms etc but we're not taking it into legals until they can clarify that they can sort out the title we have another one at the moment uh, where um, which, which is a project on our desk um, where the title is actually reverted to the crown um, again uh, wrongly uh, so there's a legal situation and regardless of what's been done wrong in the past it's not the point we deal with what we've got in front of us now um, so that's another situation where we can't really do much they're talking about three to six months we're two months in on that um, uh, and it's, it's a cracking deal um, but hey you know um this stuff is picked up you know it isn't always picked up uh, early enough because uh, generally we find most people don't invest enough money uh, by have getting this sort of advice so the title review is, is, is really really important at, at this stage you know um so then mo moving on from there and is 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 really we're looking at you know advice guidance etc on what contracts might be there whether they be promotion options purchases conditional or otherwise uh, joint venture agreements partnership agreements all anything that we we will need in terms of putting the deal structure together uh, and, and taking it forward and, and then it may be a number of a, a number of those that, that could all come into play um, so when we're looking at you know taking uh, the full development appraisal and then turning that into you know um, effectively an offer and then or a bit of negotiation and then heads of terms and into those various agreements in the FDA there's two things we really need to know um, one is how long is this all likely to take what costs there are associated with that and, and, and as I say in, in, weaving in and out there is, is, is all about risk and liabilities so can we shift any liabilities and any risks onto the landowner by wording the agreement in the right way to sort of say that they'll pick up certain costs should it go over a certain price if, if, if the legals are taking too long or it's too complicated or they're expensive lawyers um, that, have got, that have been you having to use at the other end as it were so we're looking at anything like that. So at the, the, the full development appraisal stage, we're just seeing what is likely to be needed. And, and so, so it gives us an idea of time and costs. So moving through the process, and we're, we're doing this, obviously the full development appraisal is a paper exercise. But what we're doing is taking one, two or three schemes all the way through. Now, some of those schemes, uh, the, the design schemes might be the same, but the deal structures might be different. We might be looking at offering something where it is pretty much a conditional purchase. Um, and, and nothing left in for the landowner. We might be putting, uh, we might might be putting, um, I don't know, uh, which might be putting a little agreement in where we're buying it a low amount of money, um, and they're getting money at a later date. Yeah. So all of these things need to be need you know, considered. But other stuff, the, when we talk about legals, you know, weaving the way all the way through the process. So. Um, once we've got planning or if we're looking at a site with planning, if it's a larger site or even on smaller sites, there'll possibly be an Section 106 agreement. Well, Section 106 is effectively just a way that um, local authorities collect, collect money. Uh, we normally associate it with affordable housing, but it's a lot more than that. Well, it's a legal agreement. Um, so you don't really want to be signing up to something that we've got it there in front of us. So if it's got planning permission, it's likely to have that 106 in place. So we can actually look at it all. That's, that that will come from the planning documents. We can look at all of that. Um, because sometimes these 106 uh, agreements are worded wrongly. So if you are looking at affordable housing, for instance, and a scheme that you're probably going to put affordable housing on, or if it's got, if it's got consent, sorry, and it's got affordable on it, um, if it's written wrong, 
um, in order for the lawyers at the registered providers end, so housing associations, for instance, or councils, um, then it becomes worth less money or it's going to take a lot of time to then go back and get it reworded. It's all the devils in the detail, I think we, we often say. So if you are going for planning and, and you get your planning and a 106 agreement is part of that, then actually it's the same thing. We've got to make sure that that, that agreement, legal agreement, agreement it, it, it's actually right, it's correct, it's what we need it to say. Now, I don't know about you, but, you know, legalese is, is, is like a foreign language and I, I'm used to it, you know, or it can be like a foreign language. So you do need the advice, you know. They don't put you know, four lines or, or 40 lines sometimes without any punctuation, you know, they don't, they don't did not do that for a reason, you know, the, the, the less punctuation that we have, in fact, is there more ambiguity or less? Well, yeah, you know, it depends what side of the fence you're coming from. But, you know, so what you're looking for is those agreements that, that whether you're part of drawing them up or you're taking them on, you're inheriting them, we want to make sure that they are not weak or they don't weaken our, pl our, our position. And, and, and if we find a little... Um, little issues that are there, as I say, it can aid our negotiation, it can give us the edge. Um, so moving forward on that, so um, yeah, so section 106 agreements, uh, you know, as they deal with affordable housing and a number of other things. There's something else that's called uh, an APC, which is a, another way that local authorities collect money. It's generally uh, it's an advanced payment certificate, I think the C is, um, and that's a way to collect money for things like road bonds. Um, so those of you that haven't been involved in perhaps slightly bigger projects, you might not be aware that, you know, there are things like bonds that kick around, which sometimes mean that you've either got to put a lot of money in effectively into an escrow account um, for a period, typically a couple of years after after the, the project's finished, to make sure that the road is, is, is up to standard. And if it isn't, then they've got that money there that they can go and repair it, etc., etc. Now you can pay, you can, you can purchase bonds and they cost money. So this is something else we'll be saying is, OK, this is the cost bit. So it's a legal thing. So it becomes a cost. You know, uh, there's all sorts of other bonds, uh, payment bonds, performance bonds. And if you've never heard of any of these things, you, 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 you want to get clued up on them. And we will be dealing with everything that we're talking about again today. As we go through this process, we will tell you when they come in and a little bit more about them. Um, but these are all legal things and they need legal reviews, you know, because you don't want to be signing something that's committing you to perhaps a hundred thousand pounds to, to put 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 away or a ten, twelve, fifteen thousand pound bond to, to pay for that without it being right, you know. Um, you know, and, and taking it through, you know, if we if, if we then move on, uh, we might have contracts with um, uh, with professional suppliers, you know, professional services, you know, so architects, planning consultants. Now, you 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 know, after a while, you probably don't need um, you know legal legal input on that. But actually, the first time you do any of these, you really want somebody to cast their eye over. It's not always a lawyer. So when we're talking about contracts, um, it can be you know somebody like ourselves that are familiar with it. QSs, etc. You know, they're familiar with this sort of stuff, but you need somebody to perhaps have a look at this stuff and to guide you and advise you. So all the way through. So design contracts, perhaps build contracts. Obviously, if you if you're putting a build out to a contractor or a load of subcontractors, we need the paperwork. You might operate on the basis that you perhaps still you don't need the paperwork. Your word is your bond. You know we've lived, we've been doing this for generations. We know how it works. But actually now uh, it's a lot more tight. So you've got to protect yourself. You've got to protect to protect all, all the stakeholders in the process, including the funders, and they will insist on a lot of this stuff. So you might think, ah, I don't really need it. We can agree. It's fine. You know that's very very risky. You know, so then obviously as we move through a project, we've got perhaps title splitting if it's an existing building or title creation, which is the same thing to us. If it's a one big plot and we're going to section it off into into smaller plots, obviously, and perhaps sell them or re refinance them or whatever, you know, so there may be creation of leases. Uh, there may be typically in most developments we get involved with now, there's a management company. Um, it's very rare now that you can actually assign all of the land 
land to either um, a public road, if you like, which becomes adopted, um, and uh, each freehold. It's very rare now. There's nearly always some um, communal space, if you like, uh, coming under communal management, like, like you know, drainage and things like this. And, and often now we're getting a lot of roads that aren't adopted. So we have to have management uh, coming. So you need, you need legal stuff all the way through there. So the one thing that I would say is, you know, and this is slightly away from the FDA, is pay for the correct agreements, contracts, pay for the correct advice. You, you need to do it once. Yeah. And I'm not then saying you can keep repeating some of those documents or some you can. But what you then look at is you've got your own contracts, your own agreements, and actually then you work with a lawyer and they'll just customise. So the next time that you're doing something similar with them, they've got, they've got it all there and they're actually going to just customise it for that particular agreement. So really, really, really don't cut down on, 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 on your le legal investment, really, because you take on a lot more risk. Um, but so coming back to the FDA, just to sort of, you know, just to sort of finish up, really, what we're looking at is what legal input there will be all the way through the process, as I say, from from sort of securing it in the first place all the way through to exiting at the other end. You know, and there are so many ways that I, the things that I haven't mentioned in this sort of fairly short video, but we will pick up those as you go through. Um, so what we're looking at the FDA is time implications, you know, are certain things going to take a lot longer than, than we'd like them to? Well, so do we need to make sure that we've allowed another three months or six months as part of the process in order to make sure that the legals are, are right before we actually do something, before we sort of press a green button in, in some fair or certain stages? Um, and, and obviously associated with that, what cost might there be? So I mentioned one thing, just repeat that probably because it's worth it, is indemnity policies. Um, um, some people don't bother with them. Um, uh, but we, we do, last one we did probably last year, six grand, or it might have been the year before actually to be fair, six grand or so, um, there was a very, very remote chance that a, a distant ancestor would come along and say, no, you can't do what it says because in the, in the initial title back in the 1800s or whatever it was, my, my predecessor said you couldn't do that and we're saying you can't do it. And actually, so what we did in that case, we spent six odd thousand pounds for pure peace of mind. It's a five million, six million pound project. So that is, we consider to be a good investment. Very, very remote chance of that ever happening. But you know what? If it did, we, we we, we, you know, we would, it would cost an absolute fortune or could cost an absolute fortune. So really, really, you know, get that, get those title reviews done early on. Um, again, it's, it's invest money. You've got to invest money to de-risk. You can't do this. So we've been doing it for, or I personally been doing it for 40 odd years. So there aren't many things I haven't seen, but we still invest money in other people looking at it just to sort of, you know, just to sort of say, yeah, you're right or you're wrong. You've missed something. You know, I'm not there, there. I'm not putting stuff people's way just to rubber stamp it. I'm looking for them to see something I haven't. You know, it's not about ego. It's not about reputation. This is about you know paying, investing in the right advice at the right time. As I say, typically, I'm afraid, and I will say it, most of you out there won't invest enough money, and you will be putting yourself and your investors, etc., at risk. A lot of that is because you don't know. You know, so it's not you're not doing it on purpose. You just don't know. But now I'm pointing these things out to you. You've now got to go away and say, well, actually, you know, should I be? Shouldn't I be? You know, so now you become responsible for it because I'm telling you what you should be doing to a degree all the way through this hundred video series. Um, so really, FDA, it's about the time. It's about the costs. And that's all about understanding the risks and what liability effectively what liabilities they are and how we can de-risk them and that often is at a cost but sometimes going through this process through the through the title review for instance um we find out that it's just not worth it that means say we can't make it work but it's actually just not worth it so you know so we do actually a lot of the stuff once you've done one full development appraisal a lot of this stuff is repeatable it absolutely is but until you've been through it all the way through 
things like the bonds and stuff, which we'll talk about way more in more detail as we go through the build process. You know, people just need to understand them because they've never come across them before. And you can be tens of thousands of pounds in actual cost to you. And the only way place that's going to come from is your share of the profits generally. So it's been Richard Little. I've been talking about legals and what we look at in the full development appraisal. 35, 35th video in a series of 100. And we will see you again very, very soon. Thanks for joining me.